Bless you. Uh, 
top equation, you got 5x plus 2 times negative 2 equals negative 9. And you got 5x minus 4 equals negative 9. And I added 4 to both sides. And you got 5x equals negative 5. And x equals negative 1. So does everybody agree with the process? Does everybody agree with multiplication? Uh-oh. I was just checking. So, I mean, tw 20x plus 8y, so it's 2y. It's negative 36. 20x plus 15y. I mean, as long as I'm, I'm just making sure everybody's on board, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, they do look a lot like forced. Um, so, yeah, you're watching. Yeah, I know. So, anyway, does everybody agree this work? How can you check it? Plug it back in. Now, I, I, your work is fine. You did a great job. Um, I just, I just want to make sure that we're all on board. Is everybody kind of seeing this? All right. Great. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Um, okay. So, um, as far as exercise sets, I highly, highly recommend doing these in light of the fact that you have a quiz on Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, it was like a very top gun high five. Was it supposed to be the last <laughs> Alright, so um, it's because they're in different sections. They are they're in different sections. Yeah, they are. I mean like I'm breaking them up so you get the, the like groupings in the homework sets. Uh, <laughs> Um, that's section 11 one. <laughs> All right. So we are now going to skip to section 11 three, and then we're going to come back and we're going to we're going to use some of the problems out of 11 two um, to motivate to help us out. All right. In 11 three. Um, we go into a discussion on being a matrix. What does it mean to be a matrix? Why do I care what it means to be a matrix in lieu of our discussion on systems? Well, let's find out. You said this is 11-3, right? This is 11-3. So a matrix is, a, is just an array. And uh, most of the time, you, you may have never really heard the word array used in a science discussion. But an array is just a collection of numbers. It's like a set only structure. And so uh, there is a definite order, a placement, and a location to, um, to all the elements in the array. Um, for, the, for the point of referencing them by their location. That is the intent. So um, for instance, I have this matrix here. This matrix is a two by three matrix. Why am I calling it a two by three? How many rows does it have? How many columns? Three. Great. So we just call it a two by three matrix. Not a big deal. Now each entry in the matrix, each value in those in that array is called an element. Just like a set, right? We call it an element of a set. Well, it's a set. It's a structured set. Um, so we call each entry in the in the in an element. So the two by two entry or the two by two element is which reference? Anybody take, care to take a stab? So the 2, 2. So the first column, the first reference, the 2, 2. I was saying the 2, 2. The, the first one is the row number, and the second one is the column number. And we go from top to bottom, left to right. So if I say the 2, 2 element, I'm referencing the value in the second row, and then the second column. So it's what? 12. What if I ask for the 1, 3 element? Negative 16. What about the 2, 1 element? It's 2, right? 2, 1 is going to be second row, first column. We stop from top, top, down, left, right. It's just a simple naming structure. Um, hopefully you've seen matrices before, right? No? So I get some no's and some yeses. Um, I, I guess Kentucky's kind of, uh, actually I think it's Georgia that's kind of weird, no offense. Um, I think most other states push some little bit of matrix arithmetic into even elementary school. 
So you see it very early on. Pardon? Elementary school. I know what a matrix I did matrix arithmetic, subtraction and addition and multiplication in, in, in I did it in third. So, I mean, I, I think right now Georgia's school system is kind of messed up, guys. The mathy side is real messed up. Um, you guys are actually the first group that's been through on the, on, for the full four years on the plan they implemented five years ago. And um, you are, um, some of you are doing pretty darn well. Some of you, we can see that it kind of hurt. And um, so, um, anyway, um, so let's go back for a second. Now, we had a system of equations, uh, and I'm going to write it generically like A1x plus B1y equals C1, and A2x plus B2y is C2. So I have the A1s and the, B1, the, B, the A's, the B's, and the C's are just coefficients, right? They're just numbers, much like, um, like when we had our system that was uh, 5x, if I had, way to go, new marker. Uh-oh. What's that? Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Alright, let's do it again. So, uh, let's just make one up. I don't, I don't even think this really works. I mean, it probably has a solution, but it's ugly. So in this case, my this is my A1, 2 is my B1, and 16 is my C1. Does everybody kind of see the relationship I'm trying to make here? So I have another equation that will have the A2, B2, and C2. Now, if you remember when we did this with the system of equations, we didn't really go through and do anything with the x's and the y's until the very end, right? We just dealt with their coefficients. We just dealt with the coefficients. That's really pretty nice. So I can just take some time and write this as an associated matrix that has in the first row A1, B1, C1, second row A2, B2, C2. So the associated matrix for this looks like 5, 2, 16, 3 minus 5, 7. Fair enough. Now, just for bookkeeping purposes, I'm going to draw this little dashed line right here. It's just for bookkeeping purposes in your head. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just graphical. Now, we call this the augmented matrix. This augmented matrix relates to this system. And if you'll notice, this really kind of looks more, acts like the equal sign, doesn't it? All the values across on this side, well, are just what these two equations do. So let's say I give you another system. Um, what is the correlated augmented matrix? Um, let's start, um, Corey, how about you? What's the uh, first row of the augmented matrix? Um, let's go back. Um, Tanya, you look like you're paying good attention. What's the, the second row? Three, seven, nine, Absolutely. And just for book, like you really did look like you're paying attention. Uh, and so the, uh, the, the bookkeeping is just to put the dashed line down, right? So I had this augmented matrix thing that's happening. Now, uh, we've already done the plan. The same trick applies that we've been doing all along, right? In the systems of equations, if I take, if I take an equation and I multiply it by a number, it doesn't change, the, it doesn't change the equation, right? You have to remember that these are really just representations of equations. So if I multiply this by a number, it doesn't change the equation, does it? This row is still valid, but I have to multiply every value in the row by the same number. Um, I can add two rows together, can't I? I can do all these things and not change anything. 
The only difference is, when we deal with systems of equation, we add them together and we kind of dismiss the other equation until basically the end. Um, all along the way, we're going to keep up with both rows the entire time. So, here's the tricks. Any two rows of the matrix can be interchanged. Any row of the matrix can be multiplied by a non-zero number. And three, any row can be replaced by the original row plus a constant multiple of a different row. Okay? Any row can be replaced by the original row plus a constant multiple of a different row. So I have, I mean, I can replace a row, but it has to be replaced by an equivalent representation. Okay? Is that supposed to say row instead of row? Darn it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you, Patrick, for writing on my parade. Um, uh, just kidding. Uh, that throw, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Anyway, um, when finished, we're going to have a form that's called reduced, es reduced echelon form. And we'll work through it, and you'll see it when we're done. It will look uh, pretty straightforward. So let's go back to this previous problem. Let's write it down, and then let's solve it. But we're going to solve it simultaneously with the system of equations, so you can see everything that's happening. All right, the system of equations is 4x minus y equals negative 10. 3x plus 8y is negative 25. Okay, now let's go back over here. Hold on to those rules. And now finally over here, I am going to um, write this as the augmented matrix, and we're going to do the bookkeeping for both simultaneously. Okay? And you'll see that they are the exact same work. How do I transition that to an augmented matrix? What's the top row? Um, let's say Alex. What's the top row of this augmented matrix? Four. Great. Um, DJ, what's the second row? Three, eight, and twenty five. Negative Absolutely. All right. Now, first thing that we're going to do is um, if I were to do if I were to do this one, what would you do for the very first step? Um, how about Thaddeus? What would you do? Uh, I would do the eight. I would multiply the top um, equation by eight. I agree. So I get thirty-two x minus eight x minus eight y is negative eighty. And I still have 3x plus 8y is negative 25. Does everybody agree with that? Great. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same step for my augmented matrix. And I'm going to say, except I'm going to call my rows R whatever the number is, right? So R1 is going to be row 1 because I'm just going to save some time right. So I'm going to multiply R1 <coughs> by 8. <coughs> Look, that augmented matrix is the same, it's corresponding to the system, right? Yes. Okay. Well, um, Mick, what would you do now? Now on this system of equations. No, oh, um, add, add. Yeah, add the left sides and the right sides. So what do I get when I add both sides? You don't get away quite so easily. What happens when I add the left hand side, Mick? Yeah. Um, 34x. Oh, that's, that's sorry. 35x. Um, the eight one. Let's do eight. Add zero. Add zero. And what happens over here? Add five. You still need to subtract negative twenty. You still need to subtract twenty five from eight from negative eight, right? Yes. So it's negative one hundred five. 
And so we're left with this. What happens if I follow the same step? I'm going to now add row 1 to row 2. So I'm going to add this to that one. So I get 32, negative 8. Now, how this works is I'm just doing number addition, right? So I'm going to add 32 to 3. And I'm going to add negative 8 to 8. And I'm going to add negative 80 to negative 125. Augmented matrix corresponding to system, right? I mean, very literally, I haven't changed this one. Technically, I still have. 32x minus 8y is negative 80. I've just added it to this one. So I've got both systems. All right. Well, if I wanted to solve out for x, what would I do over there on my second equation? Divide by 35. So I'm going to divide both sides by 35. The equivalent step is divide row 2 by 35. So I divide, what do I get here for my number in my augmented matrix? 1, 0, and finally here, negative 3. Thanks to call. So from this, at this point, really, I already know what x is, right? Isn't that what this is telling me? I know what x is. All right, well, at this point, though, I'm not going to just go back to the equation form. I would like to keep all my work as the matrix. What can I do to, um, to this to get rid of and solve for my y? And I can do the same thing over here. So this was kind of my step three, really. So four, I've got 32, um, got 32x minus 8y is negative 80, and I have the x is negative 3. That's kind of how this system evolution has happened, right? What can I do now to, uh, to solve this out? How can I get rid of the x variables to see what y is? <coughs> Multiply by negative 32. Um, equation 2 by negative 32. So my new system looks like 32x minus 8y is negative 80. And negative 32x equals uh, 96. So multiply this. negative 32. So I've got 32, negative 8, negative 80. And I'm going to combine some steps here. What is my intent in doing this? What am I going to do with these together? I'm going to add them together, right? So I'm going to add these together, and I get negative 8y, 16. So y is negative 2. Now, let's think about something for a second. I would really like to hold on to this x value being 1, right? So I can just clearly read off what the value of x is. Do you agree with that statement? Look at rule number 3. Any row can be replaced by the sum of that row plus a non-zero multiple of another row. So uh, I'm going to take my step back here for a little bit. I'm going to say, I'm going to multiply, in fact, I'm going to say, I'm going to replace row 1 with row 1 minus 32 times row 2. I'm replacing any row by a sum of that row with a constant multiple of another row. Let me read that again. I'm uh, any row can be replaced by some of the original row plus a non-zero multiple of another row. 
So I'm replacing row one. I'm going to replace this row with that row less or plus, if you want to treat it that way, a non-zero multiple of row two. So I've got one, zero, negative three. I'm not going to change it. I am, however, going to replace row one. So I'm going to multiply row two by negative 32 and add it to row one. What happens when I add negative 32 times one to positive 32? What do I get here? Zero. What happens when I multiply zero by negative 32 and add it to negative eight? I get negative eight. And what happens when I multiply negative three by negative 32? I get 96 and add it to 80. I get 16, right? So I've got a value that represents an x equation and a value that represents a y equation, don't I? What can I do to row 1 to get a uh, solution for y? I'm not going to add or subtract anymore because I've got, if this is my x column and this is my y column, X is clearly exposed now, right? But a Y is exposed, but a multiple of Y. What can I do to this entire row to get that number to be a 1? Divide, divide by negative 8, multiply by 1 over negative 8, right? Negative 1 8. So I'm going to say row 1 is row 1 divided by negative 8. And my new augmented matrix looks like 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 3. Now, out of curiosity, did I arrive at those same two answers doing the systems of equations way? Yes. Right now, you're saying, this is a little bit more challenging. But let's keep working an example, and I'm not quite done with this one, but we're going to work another example or two. And you're going to see that this is pretty darn easy. So, the only thing that we do is, um, what, does row, what does equation number one say? Any two, or not equation, bullet number one says any two rows of the matrix can be interchanged. So does it change the, the system of equations if I just write one in front of the other? Change the order in which I wrote them? It's still the same system of equations, right? So the only thing that I would do differently on, on that is I'm going to swap row 1 and row 2. Okay. Now when I look through this, I clearly see that my x is equal to negative 3. Do I not? And I clearly see that my y is negative 2. So I did some work, but I didn't have to keep up with any of the variables. I didn't have to keep up um, with sign because they're all there, right? I'm never doing any kind of a distribution of a minus sign through. All I'm doing is keeping track of coefficients. Now, this may not seem very elegant, but when we do a couple more examples, I promise this, uh, this goal is going to be your favorite choice. So this is what we refer to as row or reduced echelon form. Now, when I say reduced echelon form, what I mean is on the left-hand side of the augmented matrix, I have ones down the main diagonal. So here and here I have ones, and everywhere else, I have zeros as much as possible, okay? Um, and then these can be numbers, you know, like, three, like negative 3, negative 2, they can be numbers. The whole idea is that as we do these in this matrix format, the goal is to get them to um, systems of equations. Now, you're saying, big deal, who cares? 
So BMW sets up their, their plants and they model their plants on a system of equations. Like they make cars and they try to maximize production based on a system of equations that has 165 variables. So they don't have somebody sitting here with a matrix crunching numbers for like three months to figure out how to, to maximize their plant efficiency. There are pieces of software out there that can solve this instantly. They can solve the 165 row system of equations instantly. Um, I mean, this is how companies make money. So anyway, buenos dias, have a great day. No, just the stuff from section 11 and I want to get out more examples. Football. When I'm not in football. I bet you, I bet you won't. Thank you for your attention. What is he going to do? Hey, where's my attendant sheet? Please bring that. Hey, Eli, why don't you guys come chat with me for a second? Remember, I get that attendant sheet off. You want these forms? you sit there all semester long and then you run around. I just, I want to make sure that you two are doing your best, right? Like, you both have a considerable amount of potential, but, I mean, during class, I mean, I see the note taking and the scribbling and the erasing and the giggling. I see it. So, I mean, I'm, I did it. I mean, that's how I met my wife. Um, I mean, so I can't fault you entirely. But I am just saying, yeah, I mean, I'm not even worried about discretion. Right? I'm just worried about your focus. Okay. So, okay, good deal. Take care.